This is the Doubles Only Tennis Podcast, where you learn the best tips and strategies in the world to help you become a smarter, more effective tennis player. You'll hear interviews with pro tour doubles players and coaches, including easy to use lessons to improve your game and win more matches. My name is Will Bocek, founder of the Tennis Tribe, doubles strategy coach, and host of the show. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. I'm here at Indian Wells Tennis Garden with five-time Grand Slam champion, Coach Rick Leach. Coach, welcome to the show. Thank you. I actually have nine, if if you want to count the mixed. Oh, nine. (laughs) Oh, I'm sorry. Sounds a little better. That's embarrassing. I looked on your Wikipedia page and it said five, but I I think I was just looking at the men's section. That's men's doubles, yeah. Okay. Foreign mixed. Well, we'll talk mixed as well here in a second. Um, So how's the season going so far? You're coaching the, uh, the breakers. You know, I think it's going pretty well. Um, we're four and two. Uh, we're tied for second now. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's still early. Uh, yeah. We 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 get Desiree on Monday, and you know, she's came from the World Doubles Championships. So. Right. Um, but we lose Amanda. So Amanda's been incredible. Yeah. You know, she's Slova. been yeah been bowling. I know she's leading the league. She hasn't lost a set in singles, and for some reason, I don't know why she's not in the top ten. But I think next year she'll have a great year. Yeah. Yeah, she's been playing really well. Um, so, uh, a couple questions. Well, to start, what do you what have you seen change over the years in doubles as far as like when you were on tour versus what you're seeing today? Yeah, you know, I was on the tour for a long time, um, eighty seven to 05. and um, in my day, if if somebody served and stayed back, I, I, I thought for sure I'd win. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think the game's changed where now guys can serve and have a huge first serve and a huge forehand and win. You know, you look at a guy like Jack Sock, you know, who's right. one of the best doubles players in the world. And, um, you know, with the with the change of the string, I think, you know, guys can take full swings and keep the ball on the court. You know, I, I remember in, in 05 when I retired, Lux Long came out. And, right. and Agassi said, he goes, if, if he called it Lux a cheat. He, yeah. said, he said if one person uses it, everybody has to use it because it changed the game. You know, I mean, all of a sudden you can take, like I said, full swings, get more spin and uh, really make the ball bend. And um, I actually saw it in 04. I played the doll down here in the desert. He uh-huh. and uh, Tommy Robredo in doubles. And I'm, I'm looking at the ball, and it's like a different shape. You know, yeah. it just had a different spin velocity, and, and, and it was heavy. I mean, I still felt like I could not miss many volleys because that was my strength. But, mm-hmm. you know, he, he, he was a baller. I could tell right away. And he was young. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Turned out um, he was pretty good at, yeah, he's pretty pretty good. Good at tennis. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, so back to world team tennis. Uh, how does, I guess, actually this doesn't even make sense. I was going to ask about your lineup strategy, but you're kind of limited by your roster, huh? You're, you're limited, but there is a lot of strategy to it. Okay. Uh, you Let's know, the home team, it. the home team gets to pick. Okay. And, um, I, for example, you know, last night we had Amanda finish the match and I, I set the lineup. And the reason why I did that is, the women seem to be able to break serve a little bit easier than sure. the guys. And if we needed to come back, you wanted that, your, your, your most likely win at the, at the end of the match. So we, I put Amanda, you know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out, last. Mm-hmm. And, of course, she, she won, you know. And, and in team tennis with extended play, you can make up some ground. You know, two nights ago when we played Springfield, she won five love against Katie McNally. I mean, incredible. Yeah. Yeah. And then... Katie was able to win a game. We were still two day, two games back. Right. And Amanda was so sweet. She texted me and she said, "I'm sorry I let you down. I let the team down. I'll do better." But oh, come on, man. she won five straight games. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so That's too much pressure. Yeah. On. So it's important. You know, um, you tr- you try to maybe put your your events you're not doing as well maybe at the start, mm-hmm. and then the better events towards the end, and then it helps one three five because you serve first. So you know, one service break could be five two. Right. And 5-2 margin is huge in team tennis, you yeah. know, that three-game margin. So, you know, every game counts. Yeah. So uh, there is a little bit of strategy, and it changes every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In fact, I have to make my lineup for tomorrow, and I haven't even done it yet, so i gotta, I got to put my thinking cap on. Okay. Um, so why uh, – it this could be just because of the limited roster, but, but why don't I see a lot of subs? Is that a rule change, or it's still allowed, right? It, it sure is. Um, I think because – 
there's single specialists and double specialists here. Yeah. If you had, say, two singles players, then you might see somebody come in, you know. Or if you had somebody that had a huge serve, you might bring them in to serve out a match think, or something yeah. like that. And it, it, it adds a lot for the fans, you know. And, and yeah. I think it's fun to see. Mm-hmm. But it's not great for team morale. You know, you, you take out somebody and yeah. then they're feeling like, hey, I'm not playing well. And they lose their confidence and stuff. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I haven't I haven't seen any substitutions, believe it or not, this this whole week. But uh, in yeah. the past, I've seen a lot, you know, yeah. with team tennis. So it's it's a nice rule that that you can do that. And um, you know, if somebody's not playing well, you can bring him in. If somebody was to get hurt, you know, they could play singles or, right. or whatever. So it's a nice little variable. Yeah, um, yeah. The one that makes the, the the one that makes the most sense to me is the the serve that you just talked about. So if I had like Isner or even like Fritz on my team, right? It's yes. like we're up. Four three serving. We need to close it out. Fritz, you're in, or Isner, you're in. Exactly. You know, um, we, we were supposed to have John on our team, and I was thinking about that before. You know, we, yeah. You know, he might have not been in the in the mixed doubles lineup, but if we're serving for the match, you know, who, yeah. who other than John Isner serving out the match? Right. right. So, you know, and the same thing. You know, if you have a really good returner, you know, like maybe sure. you know uh, maybe bring Amanda in to return. I mean, you know, yeah. her return is incredible. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's something to think about, and it's good for the fans. I mean, I also like playing the lets. I mean, it's so much fun. And in in team tennis, you don't have to be the returner to return a let. You know, in doubles, the person on the op not returning can go across and take it. Yeah. And I've had that happen to me, too, where a guy came across and just tagged me because you're so close. You know, it's... I remember seeing that last year. I don't think I've seen it this year. Yeah, Um, I don't think so either. I mean, a lot of it depends on how the net is, you know, if it's softer or whatever, and it doesn't take a huge, you know, bounce. Yeah. But, but it's it's weird the first time you see that. Yes. <laughs> it is, and it's weird that playing lets. I mean, you got to get used to it. You yeah, know? you but definitely then do. You get used to it, and it's no problem. You know, for the college guys, they did it in college anyway. So, like, Austin played at A&M, and, you know, if you played college tennis, it's easy. Stevie played at SC, so. Right. Yeah. So how much coaching are, actually, are you actually doing out there, like, on the court? That's a good question. Um, not a lot. Um, you know, obviously, these are – you know, seasoned professionals, they, they know how to play the game. Mm-hmm. I, I will offer um, some advice sometimes, you know, where to serve, what stroke to hit to, what side. Mm-hmm. Um, I think more importantly is when I call my timeouts. I mean, yesterday I think I was really good at it. Every time I called the, uh, call the timeout, we won the point. Yeah. And so, you know, you just you, you look at momentum swings, you look how a player's feeling, and sometimes you just got to slow them up, you know, and they might not like it, but it, it helps them, you know. So, um, I, I, I'm probably more of a supporter and, in, 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 you know, somebody gives encouragement rather than a coach, at, you know, because it's so fast. Right. But um, we talk about, we changed some tactics today in the women's doubles. And mm-hmm. um, we, we talk about, I mean, you know, you're always trying to get better. I mean, as a, as a former tennis pro and now as a coach, I mean, every time you step on the court, you try to get a little better. And uh, I think the really good pros will ask me and you say, hey, what can I do better? You know, why did I miss that shot? Or, sure. you know, that technique might be off a little bit on something a volley or their footwork or something you know and i've been around the game for 51 years so usually i know what's going on <laughs> what uh what was the tactical change in the women's doubles do you mind sharing no um we, we decided to stay back um returning because mm-hmm. um um you know amanda's not a not a huge fan of reflex volleys and, and yeah. closing the net so uh you know tatiana sometimes struggles uh you know with some returns if there's good servers i mean you got Coco Vandeweghe and Caroline Dolheit serving bombs. So right. this took a little pressure off her, and, and they, they lost 5-3, but winning three games was huge. Mm-hmm. You know, it kept the match really close. I mean, yesterday when, when they lost 5-love and we still won, that, that doesn't happen very often. <laughs> right. So, you know, every game counts, and um, small little tactical things can help. Sure, absolutely. Um, so, so what else are you doing now outside of World Team Tennis? Are you still um, coaching some players? Yeah, I, I teach at the uh, Newport Beach Tennis Club. I've okay. been there on and off since 2006. Um, I do a lot of pro-ams, charity events, play a couple senior tournaments here and there, and um, just involved with the game. It's, it's, it's a sport that has been so good to me, and I've been so blessed to play 18 years on tour and um, you know win Grand Slams, win Davis Cups. And, mm-hmm. um, I'm very thankful that I had a father that played um, my father, who's in the hospital right now, I'm thinking of him. Um, he, he was my inspiration. So, mm-hmm. you know, uh, he, he was the coach at USC for 22 years, taught me how to play, and he really taught me a passion for the game. He wasn't like one of those parents that pressured me, you know, and yeah. made me hate it. 
So that's why I'm still involved, and, and I think that I've been involved with Team Tennis over 20 years, tennis a player and tennis a coach. Yeah. So uh, I love the format. I just hope it keeps going. You know, we don't have huge fan attendance yet here, yeah. and it, a lot of it probably has to do with the Vax rule for kids, you know. And to me, the Team Tennis is all about kids because, mm -hmm. um, you know, they can come on the court after and get all the players' autographs and meet the, meet the players and... I remember as a kid growing up in Southern California, I went to L.A. Strings matches. Mm -hmm. Got to see Jimmy Connors play, Chris yeah. Everett, Eli Nastasi, John Lloyd. They play, he played doubles yeah. with, uh, with Connors. And then one year in, in Anaheim, we had the Anaheim Oranges, and uh, we had the Amitraj brothers playing. And as a kid, you know, you get so much behind your team. You want your home team to win. And you really get an association with the players. You get to meet them. And, and that's what the sport's about is, is inspiring young kids to play. And it's, it's, I think it's great for kids to watch, too, because you see men and women playing together and competing together and uh, on the same team. So yeah. it just it, it teaches you good life lessons, and um, I just I think it's, I, love, I love team tennis. Yeah, it's a lot of fun to watch, too. Definitely. Um, so do you like this two-week format um, that they've done the last few years? Do you feel you like know, that it, should it, stick well, around? I think so. It makes sense because, yeah. uh, you know, the player's schedule is so busy now. There's yeah. not a lot of free weeks. Right. And so um, I've heard talk next year they might even condense it down to maybe 10 days, you know, start on Friday and go, you know, the next the week. the following Sunday or yeah, something. Yeah, because, um, you know, you, you want the top players to play, mm -hmm. and you don't want it to be a hassle for them, and you don't want them to miss out on ranking points. So, yeah. um, you know, I'm all for it. I think it is a good chance we can have it here next year. Yeah. And I think it will be the two-week or 10-day format. Yeah. Um, so... You know, it's tough in the, in the in the summertime when it was historically played. Mm -hmm. you, it would be tough on the guys because they would miss uh, some big tournaments. It was easier on the girls; they wouldn't miss the bigger tournaments. But um, you know, you want to get ranking points, and you're not getting ranking points. But the benefit of team tennis is, you you know, it's fun, and you get a, you get a guaranteed salary, and you get some great coaching. You know, there's obviously every coach in this league is a great coach. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think you get great coaching, and it's fun. You know, it's like I was talking to Amanda earlier. She, she wishes she could play tournament next week because she's seeing the ball like a grapefruit now. Yeah. You know, I mean, the girl's playing incredible. Yeah. And I, I, I'm like, why aren't you in the top 20? I mean, this is, <laughs> this is mind-boggling. And she said, uh, well, you know, I, I, she goes, I get a little bored in practice. It's very monotonous, and I just had a bad year last year. So, hmm. you know, it, 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 this maybe will jumpstart a career. I mean, if you look at last year's uh, team tennis season at the Greenbrier, we had Jenny Brady on our team. Yeah. Jenny, Jenny Brady, after Team Tennis, went on a huge roll. She oh, yeah. won Lexington, semifinals U.S. Open, yep. and she was a different player. Yeah. So I'm not saying it was because of me. I'm just saying she got that competition where every point's so important in the no-ad scoring. You, 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 just, you get big-eyed, and you, you get really, really um, hmm. sharp. You know, and you cut out the, uh, the, the errors, and you play smarter, and you try the right shots. And Jenny's a great example, and it was, it was great to coach her because she was so awesome. Huh, that's and interesting. Finals of Australian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she did. <laughs> yeah. She um yeah, she had a great little run there. Um that's an interesting theory. So like the Yeah, with the team tennis you've got like every because every game matters, you're you're down you know, if you're down I guess in these formats it's like you're down four one, but you're still fighting, right? Oh, Whereas big time. normal tennis you're down to set five one or down five one in a set. It's like, okay, I'll figure out the next one, you know? Yeah, you might conserve your energy or something like that. But, um, you know, every game is so important. And, and if, if you're a fan out here, the first match of the day came down to a, you know, a sudden death tiebreaker. Yeah. And every match is so close. I mean, you know, I think there's so much parity in the league. Every team is, is so even that it, it makes it fun to watch. I mean, the yeah. last, you know, the last today, last match, Stevie and Darian King go out there and it's tied. Right. So who, there wasn't going to be any overtime, but whoever won the yeah. set was going to win the match. Yeah. So uh, thankfully, Steve won <laughs> for us. <laughs> so uh, before we get into a little double strategy, explain uh, Steve Johnson to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Stevie's really the ultimate team guy. You know, um, he's hilarious out there. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, arguably one of the best college players ever. Yeah. You know, he had that yeah. he, that seventy-two match winning streak or seventy-three. I can't remember, but. Um, um, Stevie's fun. You know, he's, I think he's great for the crowd. Um, he is. He, uh, you know, he's, I think he's at the point of his career where he's, he's got his priorities straight. He just, you know, he's got a family now. And yeah. um, he actually mentioned before the last game, he said that, you know, his wife and 
and and uh, baby is going to be down here, so he wasn't, you know, he, he needed to take care of business quickly, you know. Yeah. And uh, he's had his dog down here, and and uh, he's just a great guy. Um, you know, he, he like me, his dad was a huge influence on him and uh, a, a great coach. Uh huh. And um, you know, Stevie's just a class guy. Yeah. It seems like from the outside looking in, it seems like he's got a good perspective. Like he he's not taking it quite you know too seriously and really appreciates you know the moments out here i think so at this stage of his career you know but don't get me wrong he still wants to win (laughs) yeah no he he fights hard out there yeah and you know that's really what it's all about you know i i talked to some fans after the match and they all had a great time and yeah you know we've had a tough run here with the with the pandemic so it's it's nice to just smile and and enjoy sports and enjoy watching it live yeah absolutely so um a couple questions on double strategy so we've got deciding points here. Um, let's say your team's serving. I noticed you typically would step in and, and you know, maybe give them a serve spot or something like that. Um, how do you think about uh, the serve strategy on a deciding point? Yeah, I think you, you know, normally you want to go with your strength, your best serve, or your opponent's weakness. Um, okay. How do you juggle that? Like, which one's more important? Um, to me, the first serve is more important because, um, mm-hmm. you know, with today's game, I mean, everybody usually has a pretty big first serve, and they probably win a higher percentage when they get that in. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I, I would, I, I just want to slow them down and, and make them take a deep breath and, mm-hmm. and go with their best serve, you know. Um, and it's tough. It's a lot of pressure, you know, and, and it always doesn't work. But uh, I think at the end of the day, if you, if you go with your best serve and you miss it, you can live with it, you know. And... Um, I, I, I've been amazed at the way Amanda serves. I mean, mm-hmm. her serve motion is so beautiful, and she can hit her spots, and I think that's really been helping her this yeah. season. Um, what about uh, return strategy? How do you how do you think about that? Well, for me, I, I was I was taught to try to make every return. You know, uh, yeah. the game's changed some where guys just try to slap the return. Mm-hmm. Um, I think in this format, it's important to get the return in. You know, mm-hmm. I mean. You know, you you don't want to you don't want to go for too much. I don't care if it's a second serve and it's sitting up. You want to hit it, but um, I'm kind of a little bit old school. Where I think, I mean, when I play doubles, I try to make every single return. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of an old school Australian mentality. But um, my strength was to show up and make, you know, a lot of balls, and then my partner was the put away guy. So I was more of a setup guy. Yeah. But um, you know, it just kills me when it's a three all point and they miss the return. I mean, yeah. that, that just like I feel like I'm getting stabbed when that happens. So. <laughs> So to me, I mean, uh, the return is important just to get it in play, maybe take a little off, and, uh, you know, then anybody can win the point. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like in a, a normal scoring format, like sets to six, two out of three, or even three out of five, you can just take big cuts, and yes. eventually you'll have a game where you make three of them and yes. you get a break point. Whereas this, it's like only five games, so... It's too fast. You may you know? go... Yeah through a set and just never make three in no, a game no. so, so that you're makes a-, a lot of sense you're absolutely right you know every game is so important and it goes so fast yeah. you know with the no ad scoring um, I mean basically in the men's doubles we lost the tiebreaker because of two shots Austin missed a volley that he shouldn't have missed and Stevie missed an overhead mm-hmm. we win those two points we win the set so I mean that's how that's a, such a fine line mm-hmm. but at the highest level you're professional you, you should make these shots you know yeah um, so how do you think about mixed strategy? This is one of the only mixed events of the year, along with the Grand Slams. Um, well, you know, there's it, it, it obviously depends who you're playing against. Um, I, uh, I mean, Austin's been great in the mix. Uh, he mm-hmm. plays very smart. You know, he, he uh, has a crafty lefty serve mm-hmm. and uh, m- moves well at net. Um, I was a big fan of mixed playing. I always played in all the slams. I, I love playing mixed. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so do I. Yeah, it's. I think it's. It's and, and you know, people that watch a lot of people play mixed because it's so much fun. Yeah. And um, at the club level and and uh, a lot of the spectators here, so it's fun to watch. You know, it's fun when a girl can go out there and you know, hit an ace on the guy or you look at Coco just thumping overhead. You know, I mean, she yeah. can really hit the ball hard. And, yeah. You know, Coco plays more like men's doubles. I mean, she poaches and, and same with Caroline Dullheit. I mean, they, they're a tough team. Yeah. And, uh, you know, last night with, uh, f- you know, Flipkins and, uh, and, and Kim Kleisters, I mean, that's a tough team too. Yeah. So you're seeing some of the best doubles in the world here. And then mm-hmm. you got Katie McNally and Asia Muhammad. And, you know, I mean, th- these are the best doubles players in the world. So it's, we've been struggling a little bit in that front on our team. 
but uh, I think it's going to change next week with Des. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, it definitely should help. Yeah. Um, what is uh, what's your favorite play in doubles for, from when you were playing? So, for example, uh, mine is when the opponent serves and volleys. My partner hits a return down at their feet. I'm able to poach off the return. I love finishing a yeah. a point like that. What's your favorite? I, I think I, I have to agree with you on that. That's one of my favorite things. Yeah. You know, like I just said, I'm, I was the guy that tried to make every return, and, and I was a deuce court guy and set my partner up. Um, that is really fun, especially if you have a called poach, you know, off the return. Yeah. Um, for me, uh, I being left-handed, my favorite thing in the world is to hit a drop volley. And you mm-hmm. don't hit many of them in tennis, and it's probably a stupid shot. <laughs> but being left-handed, right-brained, I'm more creative. And those kind of shots, you know, like an angle, either a dipper shot angle or a drop volley angle, it, it makes me come back and want to play the next day. Yeah. I mean, I absolutely love that. In fact, my nickname in college was Spangle, <laughs> which is short for spin angle, you know, because uh, <laughs> I have to be careful not to try that shot too often when I play. But if, if I can, you know, hit a drop volley that kind of almost goes out the gate, it has so much backspin, you know, that'll, that'll make my day. Yeah. <laughs> but in, in doubles, I... I think another really a thing I like a lot is um, reflex volleys, and if I can reflex one off the tape, for some reason I, I get a, I get a huge kick out of that. Yeah. If I can yeah. a reflex volley off the tape, and uh, when I was playing, I mean, obviously I got pretty good at doubles. I I felt like I should never miss a volley, and yeah. I felt like if I did, you know, I, it's my bad, and I it shouldn't happen. Yeah. And I think I used to go through matches and maybe miss, you know, I one or two or three or whatever, and yeah. I think about it so. I was just blessed with good hands. I don't know why. <laughs> and I grew up in the era with wood rackets. So, you know, I, w- I didn't have the huge swings. I didn't have the huge topspin. I didn't have the severe grips. Uh-huh. You know, I was, I was a Dunlop Max Play guy when I was younger. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Um, so we're at 20 minutes. Do you have, like, five more? Yeah, yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, so you, you, you were left-handed, or you are left-handed. Uh, how do you think about playing, when you're playing with a righty, forehands in the middle, forehands on the outside, your preferred return side how do, how do you think about that you know um the great thing about playing with the righty lefty combination is you don't have to serve in the sun and mm-hmm. that, that's important because you know in, in a lot of places the sun can be really bad mm-hmm. um i sh- you know if you look at the great teams in the past with lefty righty combinations like a you know like a McEnroe and fleming or a newcomb and roach normally the the lefty or you know the woodies normally the lefties in the ad side yeah. i i had to play the deuce side because my partners on the tour needed to play the ad side first with Tim Possett then Jim Pugh who I had the most success with we became number one in the world mm-hmm. and Jim really liked that backhand side he had two hands his backhand return cross court was money and so I kind of adapted to the deuce side and um, it was great for poaching yeah. because he also returned very well so you know that 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 forehand in the middle is nice yeah. and um, you know it's it's just a matter of meshing with your partner and it doesn't matter if you're lefty or righty but i would say that being left-handed kept me on the game in the game for another year or two when i shouldn't have been just okay. because being left-handed you know that yeah the slider serve out wide and and um yeah. the, the different spins this gives you a competitive advantage a little yeah bit. but but i would say coaching it's probably been a little bit of a disadvantage because you know the the mm. pros i've played you know i can't serve to them because there's not that many lefties they want righty serves you know right so it's been a little bit of a disadvantage coaching at the highest level i mean i have coached players that have won grand slams but at the same time you know um it, it's it's a disadvantage probably coaching sure yeah interesting Our teaching I never thought about that yeah okay a few rapid fire questions uh and then i'll let you go okay um, what is your favorite tournament um, I think to play in was, was Wimbledon, just because the prestige. I used to watch, um, you know, breakfast at Wimbledon with Borg and McEnroe in the morning, wake up early, and mm-hmm. and um, it's just it's just sacred ground. I mean, every time I played that tournament, I would just feel like I was more nervous. I wanted to win more, and yeah. uh, it was a dream come true to win the doubles in the mix there, um, just because I watched it growing up. Um, I mean, I also enjoyed going to Australia because, you know, their summer, people are so friendly. Um, had my most ex- success there, three doubles and two mixed titles. So, yeah. I mean, I, I was a big fan of the Australian Open just because I felt so relaxed. It's the easiest of all the Grand Slams. Yeah. And, um, but they all add something different. You know, I mean, it's fun to play in New York because you're in the States. Yeah. Fun to play in France. You're in France. I mean, they're all amazing. And if I was a tennis fan, I'd go to all of them. Yeah. Yeah, I went to Australia last year for the first time, and it. I, I think I liked it better than the U.S. Open. Yep. I, 
Yeah, it's Stay easier. downtown, walk 15 minutes to the courts. It was so nice. You know, you have no problems getting tickets. Um, yeah. Downtown Melbourne's great. Great restaurants along the river. Yeah. And um, I have some great memories there. Um, in 2000, when I won my last slam uh, with Ellis Ferreira, we won 18-16 in the 5th. And um, we were staying in the South Yara district. And we went to the same uh, South African Steakhouse 11 out of 14 nights. And, and it was just... You know, when you don't mess with the streak when you're when you're playing well in a tournament, and yeah. had such a great time. The people down there are just so friendly, and they like Americans, which which is nice. Yeah. Uh, what is your favorite tennis book? Good question. I'm a big collector of uh, memorabilia. Um, I like Bud Collins' Encyclopedia of Tennis. I like old books too. I like Budge on tennis, Don Budge. Um, okay. You know, in, on that in that book, he talks about a forehand chop. They don't have that stroke anymore. Uh, <laughs> but the forehand chop was, you know, on fast courts, it, basically like a slice that would tail away, you know. Oh. And uh, that stroke doesn't really... Well, Stevie hit a couple tonight. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it doesn't really exist anymore. But uh, I, I like to collect old tennis books. I've got tons of old tennis books. I have one on Suzanne Langlin. Um, I have... A, like a Ken Rosewall book that he signed. I have a Rod Laver book that he signed. I mean, anything that talks about tennis, I'm a big fan. Very cool. Uh, what's your favorite non-tennis book? Mm, good question. I like uh, Clive Kessler books. I think I have about 20 of those. Um, light reading, easy reading, and I don't know why. There's a little bit of truth in all the stories, and I, I just like any of his books. Yeah. Uh, what is your favorite tennis story? It can be a personal story or... Mm. Um, I think my favorite story, I'll have to share it about my dad because I'm thinking about him, but um, in 1967, he's playing in the Newport, Rhode Island tournament um, where the Hall of Fame is. Mm -hmm. And this was before the um, invention of the tiebreaker. Mm -hmm. And um, he's there with my mom. And um, my mom, the, the big event in the, those days was the, was the player party. And so my mom... Uh, went back to the hotel because they lost the first set 6-3 uh, my dad and Dick Dell who's a famous tennis name you know his brother's mm -hmm. Donald Dell and so she went back to the hotel he didn't come back um, until it got dark and it got real late and uh, my mom was all mad at my dad and he, and, and uh he, he, my mom's like, were you drinking with the Australian guys again or what's going on, you know? And, and my, my dad's like, no, no, you won't believe what happened. It's 35 all, okay? And it got dark. So, so like, yeah, you know, she, couldn't be, she didn't believe him that it would ever go that far, I mean, yeah, at this yeah. time, you know? And there's no lights, you know, it got dark. Yeah. And they ran out of balls, in fact. So they, they went to the party. Next day they go out at 35 all, and my dad's doubles partner, Dick Dell, lost his serve. So they get down 36-35, and they lost the first set 6-3. Yeah. So that's 70 games oh my God. without breaking surf. <laughs> if the grass was so bad or their returns were so bad, I don't know. I mean, I played in, I had played Davis Cup in Newport. The grass is not great. It's, yeah. it's, it's better now. Okay. But anyway, they proceeded to break back, and they ended up winning that second set 49-47. Wow. And then they won 22-20 in the third. And... So as a kid, my dad was in the Guinness Book of World Records. So when I go to school, you know, like show and tell, I'd be like, hey, my dad's right here, you know, in the, in the Guinness Book of World Records. So that's good. To me, I think that's my, one of my favorite tennis stories. That is a good one. Yeah. Uh, so last question for you. Um, how do we make doubles more popular? That's a great question. Um, it's sad that the Bryan brothers are gone because they were great ambassadors for the game. Yeah. Um, I think... Um, you know, it, it's great that the ATP condensed it down to two sets and a breaker because it encourages more players to play. You look at this tournament, for example, Indian Wells, you know, you got Rafa playing, you got Roger playing with Stan. And if we can just get those big names playing, I think it helps a lot. I don't think doubles is sure. ever going to go away because it's a, it's a different skill set. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's always going to be there. It's just a different skill set. And we just got to, we've got to keep it going because it's such a huge part of the game. And, um, you know, personally, if it wasn't for doubles, you know, I wouldn't have been able to play very long and I wouldn't have won any major titles. So, you know, I'm a big fan of doubles too. Yeah, well, hopefully we can uh, keep it around and make it even more popular than it already is. I hope so. Awesome. All right, thanks, Rick, uh, for coming on. Appreciate it. My pleasure. If you're a doubles player, you'll love our weekly doubles newsletter. Every Thursday, we send you doubles tips and strategies to help you improve your game and become a smarter player. 
When you sign up, you'll get a free 10-page guide on how to play with more confidence and dominate at the net in doubles. You can go to thetennistribe.com to sign up now.